So we just got the vehicle delivery numbers for the previous month, August in 2024. And we can see in China, NIO delivered over 20,000 cars. This represents the fourth different occasion in a row now that NIO has delivered over 20,000 cars. And actually I was quite like mildly worried that NIO wouldn't deliver the 20,000. I was expecting maybe closer to 19, 19 and a half, but I'm very happy to see that they managed to do the 20,000 for the fourth consecutive time. Xpeng is doing quite well as well, 14,000. So it's, uh, I think, at least as far as I remember, the best month for this uh, current year. So very good for Xpeng there. We know that the demand for the new Xpeng Mono is really, really strong. I think the waiting times is up to seven, seven weeks now. And as we saw on the previous earnings, Xpeng's uh, gross margin is going in the right uh, direction. So I think there's a possibility that the Chinese uh, electric vehicle stocks may be at some point in the closest future get some nice rebounds on the like long-term perspective we can also see that li auto did uh, fairly good not their best month but close to their best month so in the high 40,000s, i think the best month as we see is july at 51 and then of course byd if uh, if you look at the total deliveries of uh, bevs and phevs uh, they are at around 328,000 for the august month so all good there the demand is strong i think the chinese electric vehicle market in the past couple of months, uh, past 50% uh, sales of electric vehicles compared to the ICE vehicles. So everything is good there. We can see for NIO, the earnings is on the 5th of September. So the interesting part for me, as I mentioned, is the net loss. I think if they manage to cut the net loss uh, for NIO, you know, by substantial amount, you know, maybe f close to 500 US dollar from the 700s, I think that's a good step in the right direction. Can see that the revenue, I mean, obviously every week I kind of change this. Now there's a, a slightly, for example, because I kind of sit down and figure out that NIO in the Q1 had, especially looking at some of the comments on the previous videos, that in Q1 they tried to sell, sell out the previous year's car. So I think this is the reason why the average selling price went down quite a bit. So I'm guessing or I'm hoping for a kind of slight rebound in average selling price for Q, Q2. So that's why I kind of changed my mind and increased it, thanks to a couple of comments on the previous videos as well. So thank you for that. Um, but yeah, so that obviously doesn't affect a whole lot other than, you know, the only uncertainty in my opinion, the revenue should be, you know, fairly close to 2.5 billion US dollar. Other sales, I'm hoping for uh, another all time high, 235, remember that if you look at the this graph here, so the green is revenue, the the white is vehicle sales, and the yellow is the other sales. Now the green and the white are you know essentially depending on the number of deliveries and of course the average selling price, but that's quite up and down over the last years. But the the other sales is quite you know um, steady, slowly increasing. So that's what I like. You know, if we are getting to two thirty five. Maybe next quarter I'm projecting to let's say 250, very close to 250. And essentially already at next quarter we would be around rate of 1 billion US dollar in other sales for NIO. So that's quite interesting to see. Uh, but yeah, so I think the gross margin of 12% is, I don't know, because I know that Xpeng and Liato had higher gross margins, but we know that NIO's uh, gross margin is lower than their vehicle margin due to the battery swap infrastructure. And the infrastructure of which we can see here that for end of uh, August, we just passed the 52 million or thereabout total swaps of all time. The number of swap stations in China are keeping up to 2,500. We know that today they passed the 2,500 mark for the global number of swap stations. But I think 50 of those are in Europe. So we would be closer to 240, 2,450 swap stations in China. So maybe by end of next or the month after we will be at 2,500. But yeah, so you can see the fleet size of end of August should be around 578,000 cars. And the daily swaps, we still continue to see, you know, more and more days in the 75 to 80,000 range. So yeah, the daily swaps obviously goes up and down quite a bit. It's a, right now it's between lows are around 69 to 71,000 daily swaps in China. And the highs are around 81 to 82,000. So let's see, let's settle for the middle around 87,000. And the number of cars per swap. So how many, you know, cars of in the fleet do we have? 
Pursing and then how many swaps do we have on a day and how many you know daily swaps is it uh, sorry daily number of cars required to do one swap so right now we are at around seven and a half cars for each swap per day and then we are at around 31 swaps per station which is around halfway the level that is required to reach the break even we know that the currently the company is around 20 percent break even for 20 percent of the swap stations so that's yeah so that's one of the reasons obviously why neo's vehicle margin is smaller and lower than their gross margin whereas for example for xpeng is the other way around for xpeng the gross margin is higher than the vehicle margin because they do not have the you know uh, expensive uh, infrastructure for the swap stations so the other sales once you add to it to the gross margin from the sorry the vehicle margin you get actually more total margin so yeah for neo is a you know kind of adding to the cost there but there's also other benefits for neo and of course we know that if you look at the total cars sold for 2024 we can see that currently neo is at around 128 almost 130,000 cars and xpeng is closer to 80 so 77,000 cars so there's a substantial difference and we know that neo is at higher selling price so if you would uh, normalize for the average selling price of the cars i don't know exactly what xpeng has because i don't follow up the data as closely maybe i should i don't know let's comment in the video if you would like that but um, i know that neo is selling at a much higher price compared to to xpeng it's a more premium kind of car so yeah if you think about that that despite that neo is still not selling twice as much but you know let's say 60 70 percent more cars than than xpeng despite a higher selling price so it's a, it's a good sign for Neo, especially knowing that uh, Neo's onwoven launch again. That being said, I, I think uh, expanding numbers are going in the right direction. So that's it. Uh, so that's uh, how the current standings are today. I think tomorrow I will do a quick update on the weekly delivery numbers. If we go to that kind of data, we can see here that my here we can see that I think yeah the lithium carbonate price is still stuck around the low 70 75000 so that's good and we can see that if you look at the delivery numbers i kind of counted on 5500 for end of last week of august and that would leave me at around 19000 cars for neo now we know that again if you look at the previous month here neo delivered just above 20000 so this kind of indicates of deliveries of north of 6000 i think for neo Maybe we should expect a very strong delivery week for Neo close to, let's say, 6,400, I don't know. I go with 6,400 or thereabouts. And that would, you know, if we change that to this number here, 640, we would get at, yeah, basically 20,000. So let's increase that to 6,580. How much do we get now? 6,580. 20,100 cars and the actual numbers was at around let's have a quick look again just for seeing how many it was yeah 20,176 it kind of depends also of how many cars do you uh, think that they delivered on the break even from you know when once you leave the the last date of july to the first day of august so for example look at this one week 31 included a few days of august 29 uh, yes yes sorry yeah so i'm uh, sorry at um, july 29 and we can see here that july on the previous month so if you go to july july 29 30 30 and 31 would have been the monday tuesday and wednesday of week 30 of week 31 so of the five working days of week 31 which Neo delivered 5,800 cars, three of the working days were in July month. So those three days would be in, obviously, the July delivery numbers. So let's say if you go five working days, three of which are in July, two in August, that's 40% of the 5,800 in, in the deliveries that was delivered that week for August numbers. And going to the... Going to my, you know, delivery numbers here, we can quickly see. So I can actually take account for that. I took 0 0.4 times 5,800. 
But again, it could be, you know, it could be that maybe, I'm, maybe you know, we don't know exactly. Maybe they did better on the those two days than they did, you know, on the first three working days of that week. And that could, you know, maybe increase this to, I don't know, let's say 0 0.5. And then that would leave us with maybe, I don't know, 6,000 cars delivered on, you know, last week of August, which would be reported tomorrow. So it's difficult to say, but it doesn't matter, to be honest. It doesn't matter because I, I think, as we know, that the number of deliveries are around 2,000. That's all that matters. If, you know, if tomorrow is 6,000 or 6,500, and if the deliveries of the two last the two first days of August was, uh, you know, 2,000 or 3,000, it doesn't matter. So anyways, that's, I think, that's going to do it for today. I'm, um, you know, be tuned for tomorrow's delivery numbers. And also on the 5th, I will do a let's say earnings uh, cover and i think it's gonna be really interesting to see the gross margin and net loss my hopes are you know net loss of just around 500 million and seeing a path forward to below 500 million of q3 and maybe you know below even 400 million in in q4 so that's gonna do it for today thank you for watching and please like and subscribe and see you in the next one